Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls. Our phone number is 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, the longevity business, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you, 844-236-6010. Likewise, if you have a success story or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Those are my blogs. We update them regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you're interested in purchasing any of the truth treatment products, including my retinol 5% gel or any of the vitamin C products, you can go over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Hmm. Somebody's honking out there. I don't know who that is. Anyway, we're talking skin health, and we've been talking about hyperpigmentation, pigment issues. Hyperpigmentation is one of the most troublesome and common of all skin complaints. Women and men around the world all complain about hyperpigmentation issues. In this country, full-blown melasma affects 5 million people. Asians are especially susceptible, Latinos as well. We spent time talking about another kind of pigment called lipofusion, I'm not going to digress here except to say lipofusion is not a dermatological, it's not a skin condition. Even though you can see it through the skin, lipofusion is an internal problem. And you want to make a distinction between hyperpigmentation, ordinary melasma, as it's called, and lipofusion if you're going to really be able to treat it effectively. There's a lot of topicals that you can use to treat hyperpigmentation. You can't use any topical products to treat lipofusion, which occurs internally even though you can see it on the skin, it's really deeper inside the skin. If you see it on the surface, the easiest distinction that you can make between lipofusion and melanin is if you can see it on the surface. If you can see it on the surface, you've got pigment issues, melasma issues, and that's good because it's a lot easier to treat melasma than it is to treat lipofusion because you have access to melasma. If you see it on the surface, you have access to it, there's lots of topical strategies that you can use, and we're gonna talk about a bunch of them here. First, I wanna just say this. If you have a hyperpigmentation issue, if you're splotchy and blotchy, it's not a topical condition. It's not a skin condition, even though it appears on the skin. It's true. It appears on the surface of the skin, and it's true that you can address it topically. It's important to recognize that pigmentation is a manifestation of the stress response. The hormones of pigmentation are, as Rick Perry says, inextricably meshed. With the hormones of stress, stress equals blotchy skin, stress equals oily skin, stress equals zitty skin. But as far as pigmentation goes, melanin, the the stuff that uh, makes pigment or the stuff that is pigment, melanin and cortisol, stress hormone, go hand in hand. And this is very underappreciated. 
the relationship between stress hormones and skin health are not appreciated by the medical model. And this is one reason why dermatology is such a failed and useless and impotent aspect of medicine. It doesn't recognize the internal nature of skin diseases in terms of pigmentation. It doesn't recognize cortisol. Stress hormone goes hand in hand with pigment. And who's responsible ultimately for managing cortisol, managing the stress response? Not the doctor. It's us. Same with you with oily skin issues. So many people complain about oily skin. There's so many products, just like there's so many products out there for, for pigmentation, for pigmented skin, there's so many products out there for oily skin. Oily skin, like pigmented skin, is a manifestation of the stress response. And when I say stress, most of us always think about our bills and our families and our jobs and all the psychological and emotional and mental aspects of stress. But stress is physiologic too. Sugar is a major instigator of the stress response. So oily skin is related to excess or excess ingestion of sugar or, or high blood sugar. Same with hyperpigmentation. Excess pigment, melasma, goes hand in hand with cortisol, stress hormone, and goes hand in hand with insulin and blood sugar, elevated blood sugar. All of this is to say that we are in charge of our stress response. We are in charge of our pigmentation response. We are in charge of our oily skin or sebaceous sebum response. So hyperpigmentation is associated with cortisol, stress hormone. It's also associated with estrogen, which functions as a stress hormone. It's also associated with nutritional deficiencies, and it's also associated with prescription drugs. Does the sun cause hyperpigmentation? Well, the sun can trigger it, but not on its own. Little kids don't get hyperpigmentation, and they're out in the sun all day long, right? The sun will, will trigger a pigment response under conditions of duress, when the body's freaked out. The sun alone will not cause hyperpigmentation. Tell that to your dermatologist. And the sun alone will not cause skin cancer. Tell that to your dermatologist. The sun alone will not cause melanoma. Tell that to your dermatologist. It's only under conditions of duress where the sun becomes an instigator of problems, internal as well as topical problems. And that duress is uh, the, uh, the, that duress, that bodily duress can be caused by sugar, can be caused by cortisol, and a whole bunch of other factors that are in our control. This is so important to understand because the skincare business, the dermatology business, the skin health business, the cosmetics business, the skin product business is so filled with predators. Predators who are intentionally predating on us and predators who are ignorantly predating on us, who don't know. Last week I got an email from a company selling a product called Beverly Hills MD Dark Spot Corrector. Maybe you got this email too. Seems to, seems to be an email blast. Beverly Hills MD, whatever that means, implying that it's a Beverly Hills doctor. It is no such thing. Beverly Hills MD. This is the kind of sneakiness that is in the skincare world. Why would they call it Beverly Hills MD, Dark Spot Corrector? Because they want you to think it's some Beverly Hills movie star doctor who invented this thing. No such thing. It's some silly company. I don't even, they're not even in Beverly Hills. I don't even know where they are. It's called Beverly Hills MD Cosmeceuticals. And so anyway, this product, it costs uh, 60 bucks an ounce. They, they knocked it down from 120 bucks an ounce. It used to be $120 an ounce. Now it's a sale, $60 an ounce. It's about 80% water. 60, do the math here, 60% or uh, uh, $60 for an ounce, right? And the product is 80% water. That means uh, 30 grams, an ounce is 30 grams, so 24 grams of it is water. So you got a, a 30 grams, which is about two tablespoons, and almost all of it is water. So you get two tablespoons of product for 60 bucks, and 80% of those two tablespoons, fully one point something tablespoons, is water and it goes for $60. This is the kind of sneakiness, nastiness, just utter creepiness that is in, uh, that's the skincare world. It is so twisted, you guys. And I've been doing it for 32 years. It is so twisted and exploitative. It's just not right. All right, so anyway, this product. This uh, Beverly Hills MD dark spot corrector. I don't mean to pick on these guys. There's a lot of a lot of ripoffs out there, but this is just so egregious. Uh, we'll talk about this when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll be back right after this. 
right, we are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on brightsideben.com. You can also go to pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and check out my blog as well as our news posts. And you can order products or join the Bright Side Ben team right off the websites. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Our number today, we do have a couple lines open, 844-236-6010. And I'll get your calls here in just a moment. We'll do, the, uh, do your calls here in, the, in our second segment or in this segment. So we get to as many calls as possible, 844-236-6010. All right. So we're talking uh, skin lightening. I got an email, yes, uh, last week from a company called Beverly Hills Plastic or Beverly Hills Dark Spot Corrector. Uh, it's made uh, Beverly Hills MD Cosmeceuticals made by uh, the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Group. Listen, I'm going to tell you something that is maybe going to be shocking to some folks who haven't heard me speak before, but if, you're in, if you've heard me talk or you've purchased skincare products before, you probably know this. Doctors don't make skincare products. They sell skincare products. And they sell skincare products to make money, not for your skin. There's very little a skincare product can do for your skin with the exception, uh, unless it has a, a certain ingredients, uh, with the exception of uh, products that contain high amounts of retinol, retinoic acid or vitamin C and that's about it all right doctors are not in the laboratory making skincare products and I know this because I'm the guy they're calling to make skincare products and I'm the guy who's making the who, who's who's filling the their orders they'd say oh I want a little this and I want a little that and so I put a little of this and a little of that in there the doctor in the white lab coat doesn't exist in the the, the doctor in the laboratory pouring the stuff out of the beakers there's no such thing and for the most part, with all due respect to my friends who are in the medical field, who are physicians, and I have a lot of friends who are physicians, they don't know nothing about chemistry, nothing about biochemistry, nothing about skin chemistry. They know about diseases. They know about statistics. They know about clinical chemistry, not biochemistry. It's so unfair. It's not right. And it's just as bad as the drug business, in my opinion. Anyway, there's Beverly Hills... I'm only picking on these guys because I got an email. There's a zillion other companies I could pick on. But I got an email for these guys, so I did some research. This Beverly Hills Dark Spot Corrector that goes for uh, $60 an ounce. That's two tablespoons for $60. And 24 of the, thir of, of the 60 grams, I'm sorry, 24 of the 30 grams is water. And so what's in the six grams of active material? Something called Kaduku Plum. All right? Now, Kaduku Plum is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, cockadoo plum is how they say it, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, supposedly a very rich source of vitamin C. Of course, vitamin C, as you know, if you listen to this program, is very important for skin lightening and skin health, but fat-soluble vitamin C, not the kind that's in this kaduku plum. This plum vitamin C is unstable. It goes bad. It darkens right in the bottle, not in the bottle that you're buying, but the bottle that I'm buying as a chemist. And I know this because I bought the stuff. I got suckered into buying it. Well, I won't tell you the company I bought it from, but the salesman was a nice guy. So I figured I'd buy some and I'd try it out. It turned brown right in my refrigerator. I bought a kilo of the stuff for $200 or $300. And it turned brown right in my refrigerator. And not only is the stuff useless for skin lightening, but it doesn't even last. And this Beverly Hills, and this is because the lady who, or the guys, it's a, a lady and a man at, who run this Beverly Hills plastic surgery group that makes Beverly Hills MD Spa, correct? They don't know. They just had some chemist make the stuff, and they put their name on it, and they sell it. Oh, yeah. The second ingredient in there is daisy flower extract. This is the ingredient deck. Water, daisy flower extract, a little bit of oil, a little bit of glycerin, and then a little bit of niacin. And we'll talk about niacin here probably in the... Uh, not tomorrow, but the next day, about niacin for skin lightening. Anyway, 10 cents, not even, maybe a nickel worth of ingredients. And the stuff used to sell for $130 an ounce. Now they got it at half price. Even well-meaning, honest skin companies, skincare, skincare companies, and, uh, who are pretty much making useless products because the paradigm is useless. The model is useless. Melasma, hyperpigmentation, darkening of the skin, really all skin problems are internal issues. 
and with the notable exceptions of retinol or retinoic acid, which is vitamin A, and vitamin C, and exfoliation techniques, which we'll be talking about. They can be very helpful. Alpha hydroxy acids and so-called beta hydroxy acids, these are all very helpful. A, C, and alpha hydroxy acids are very helpful. And with, the, with those exceptions, though, don't waste your money. With hyperpigmentation, you have a manifestation of internal conditions, an internal dysfunction, stress response. And it's usually associated with cortisol, also estrogen. People call estrogen a female hormone, but it's not really a female hormone. Men make estrogen as well as female, although women make more. Estrogen is more of a growth hormone. It's more of an inflammatory hormone. It's involved in how water, is, uh, how, how water is delivered and how water enters into a cell. It causes swelling. So why water retention is associated with estrogen. Estrogen is an inflammatory hormone. Estrogen is an immune-stimulating hormone. Estrogen is a growth hormone. And estrogen is a stress hormone. Between estrogen and cortisol and nutritional deficiencies and blood sugar and digestive health, that's really where you have your hyperpigmentation causes, and that's really where you have to work. All right, uh, I'm gonna talk more about melasma. I've got tons more to say about melasma and cortisol, and we'll talk about the stress response, and we'll talk about internal and nutritional ways and topical ways that you can address hyperpigmentation tomorrow and in the coming days on the Bright Side. Time to hit our phones, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Florida and welcome Angela to the Bright Side. What's up, Angela? Good morning. Good morning. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. How's it okay, going? Great. Great. It's going good. Thank you so much. So I have one question about one of the other two treatments that I recently purchased, the retinol gel. Okay, cool. Yes. I um, wanted to ask, um, I know that the flicking um, will happen, especially because there's a lot of active ingredients, and I'm happy that that's happening, but I wanted to know if um, how long should it take for, or how long is it typically okay for the skin to kind of go through that process, because half of my face is seeing like great results and like fresh, new, bright uh, layer of skin, and then the bottom half is just taking a lot of time for it to kind of the the bottom half sense. is thicker. The bottom half has more dead skin cells on it, so the top and, and not the forehead. The forehead and the chin have are the thickest parts of the face. The forehead and the chin. So when you say the bot the top half, it looks good. I assume you're talking about which the middle part, right? Or are you talking about the forehead? <laughs> Well, like the upper part of the cheeks are great. Yeah, um, those are thinner and, skin areas. The thinner skin okay. areas will flake less than the thicker skin areas. So you'll get more flaking in the chin uh, and the forehead, maybe even the nose. And then you'll have less flaking in the middle. You have less skin cells there. So uh, if you want to get rid of the, are you saying you want to get rid of that ex excess flakiness is what you're saying? Right, and I'm wondering, do I need to, because it's been a week. And I'm wondering, do I need to add more? Should I wait until everything is no, fully? No, you can do it once a week. Do it. You can do it once a week. You don't have to wait for all the flake off. And then you might want to, if, if it's not sticky, if, it's, if the flakiness is loose, you might want to use a little washcloth or something and kind of, or some alpha hydroxy acids and kind of, kind of uh, slough it off a little bit. But don't force it to slough off. You want it to gently, okay. if, you don't want to force anything. So you can gently kind of with a washcloth, gently, lightly go over the, the flakiness and it'll come off, but don't force it if it's not ready to come off. Uh, and then you can use it once or twice a week, regardless of whether the flakes, the, the dead skin cells have come off yet. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank okay, you. Okay, and make sure, did you get some vitamin C with that, Angela? Did I send you a little vitamin C in there? Yes. Well, okay. um, I have more of the, the healing cream. Well, why don't you hang on? Don't go away, Angela. We'll, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back. We'll be back with more good health information right now. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Angela in Florida about retinol gel, 5% retinol. If you're interested in checking out our truth treatment products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so Angela, you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, retinol, retinol gel. You, you're noticing uh, the new that new soft, young-looking skin on the cheek area, and then you said you got flakiness on the bottom still, or is that correct? Yeah, chin? literally. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to slough that off gently, but very gently. Do not scrub it off. You want to let that sloughing come come flopping off, and you will get more flakiness on the chin and the forehead because you got more dead dead cells there. And you can actually treat your forehead and your chin a little bit more than you do the middle part of your. Uh, the middle part of your face, the, the, the right. thinner skin there. Uh, you want to be careful around the eyes, and also you can use a little extra if you have hyperpigmentation, dark spots. Retinol is one of the most effective ingredients for dark spots. Uh, did you have anything else? Is there, did I answer your question? No, 
You too. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, I was going to tell you about the vitamin C. Use a little yeah. bit of that omega-6 healing cream. Uh, I call it vitamin C because there's a bunch of vitamin C in there. But the omega-6 healing oh. cream will help uh, will help uh, improve the prog- improve the way the the improve the flakiness, help the flakiness come off a little bit faster. Okay. Do you use it right after? If I were to, you can use it either way. Either way. Okay. I personally would wait a little bit, like uh, overnight or something. But you could use it right after. Absolutely. Okay then. Okay. Well, thank you so much, man. Sure. Thank you, Angela. Hope you enjoy the retinol and your omega-6 healing cream. If you're interested, uh, if you're listening and you're interested, it's truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Kathleen in Massachusetts. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Thank you, Ben. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you in Massachusetts? Where are you in Massachusetts, by the way? I uh, Actually, I work in Boston. Oh, okay. Love Boston. I'm a fan. Yeah. How, did yeah, you have so a good summer? Fun. Humid this summer? Uh, I'm sorry. How was it this summer? I was there last year, and, and there was no humidity at all. It was so nice. We haven't really had a summer this year. It kind of went from we had a couple of hot days, and now it's just turned to 60. That's oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. interesting. All right. Well, yeah. Boston's an awesome town. I'm yeah, a fan. Yeah, great place. Um, my question is about my sister. Uh, she's 53, and she, she's been taking Ambien for a couple of years. Ooh. And, yeah, she I know. Can't get, she, she wants to get off of it? Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. She's, I think she's stopped taking it for the weekend and today. And I was speaking with her today, and she said she feels like she's hungover. Okay. You know, uh, and I think she, it's just about her body getting rid of it. Yeah, that's a tough one. Sleeping pills are really, really tough. Uh, is, yeah. she met, is she into menopause, or is she, do you know where she well, is? Well, she had a, a partial hysterectomy, so I think okay. the menopause issue is, is gone with her symptoms, I'm sure. Okay, she may be having insomnia related to hormone problems, if that's the... Yeah. You know, it's tough. When you start to wean yourself off of Ambien or any sleeping pills, it's just going to be really, really hard to fall asleep. So there's a couple mm-hmm. things you, you're going to want to do. First of all, before you go to bed, do anything you could do to relax your muscles or have your sister do anything she could do to relax her muscles. Ideally, a massage would be great before she goes to bed. If she can get, you know, if she's married and she get her husband to give her a nice long massage, especially a foot massage because there's a lot of relaxation nerves in the feet, the bottom of the feet. But anything you could do to relax the body, hot shower, hot bath, will help. Deep breathing, of course, will really help. I, I would tell you to do, uh, there's some nutritional supplements that you can use that will help relax you, and they're certainly better than Ambien, but, uh, or any sleeping pill for that matter, but you don't want to get hooked on these things either. Melatonin is absolutely spectacular for falling asleep, uh, uh, and you could do you know, 9 milligrams of sublingual melat- melatonin, uh, 6 milligrams, even up to 12 milligrams. I've seen studies on 15 milligrams of melatonin, but then you're going to get hooked on the melatonin, and that's not necessarily a good idea either, although three milligrams a night might be helpful. As we, as we get older, our melatonin levels tend to drop, so three milligrams a night might not be a bad idea. Lithium orotate is very relaxing. GABA, uh, G-A-B-A, is very relaxing. 5-HTP, or even just straight tryptophan, 5-hydroxy tryptophan, or just straight tryptophan, uh, those can be... Uh, those can be very uh, relaxing before she goes to bed. Uh, magnesium, the osteomag, is also has relaxing effects. These are all wonderful nutrients that can help relax her. Uh, and okay. staying, staying away from sugar, obviously, bread or anything like that within a couple hours of her falling or going to bed, that is also very important. Uh, and then also deep breathing, slow, deep breathing techniques. If I haven't mentioned that, I don't know if I just said that or not, but slow, deep breathing can also help. Um, paying attention to body rhythms is also a good strategy. Anything she could do to activate her parasympathetic nervous system or relaxation nervous system and listening to your heartbeat, listening to your breathing, the in and out of your breathing, listening to any bodily rhythms or bodily sounds. In fact, listening to anything that's rhythmic will help activate the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's a, another good strategy to use. So uh, between melatonin and lithium and GABA and all these nutritional strategies and activating the parasympathetic with hot tubs, hot baths, hot baths, massages, um, and then also listening to body rhythms, that's pretty much the way to go if you want to wean yourself off of uh, sleeping pills. and make, better- sure, make sure she weans herself off slowly, and it sounds like she's doing it. Okay. Half a dose, quarter dose, eighth of a dose, that kind of thing. Okay, that's what I was curious about, whether she should just stop completely. And I wouldn't stop completely. She, she will not be able to fall asleep if she stops completely, if she's been on it for okay. two years. So wean herself off gradually, okay? Okay. Thank you, Kathleen. Have a great Thank day. Thank you so much, Ben. You too. Okay, Thank take you. care. Bye-bye. 
All right, uh, let's go to Chad in Colorado. Welcome to the Bright Side, Chad. What's up? Good morning, Bright Side, Ben. Good morning, Chad. I uh, wanted to tell you, you taught me great respect for the profession of pharmacist. Okay, Apparently, you. you know a little bit more than how to shovel pills in a bottle and fix a jammed up printer. That's because I am. <laughs> that's because I am a lover of biochemistry, and at the end of the day, in my opinion, pharmacy should be biochemistry. That's what it should be all about. Not pharmacology and drugs, and not necessarily pharmacology and drugs and, and, and stuff that you learn from the drug companies. You know, when we went to pharmacy school, they made us go to the Lilly Corporation. We had to spend our own hard-earned money to fly to Indiana to go get a tour th for, through Lilly. Why? Because they wanted to propagandize us on the importance of Prozac and, and drug company strategies. So I'm not, a, I'm not the kind of pharmacist that just uses pharmacology, although I do recognize antibiotics and pain pills and other things sometimes have their, their role. I have a I have a place I have a place a role to play in health, but mostly the way I look at it, it's nutrition and biochem nutritional biochemistry, understanding how to manipulate biochemistry with nutritional strategies as well as spiritual, mental, and emotional strategies. How can we help you today, my friend? Well, I'm calling about my mother. Um, I've listened to your archives, and you stated that anemia is usually a secondary condition. Yes, um, she's it always 68. Is a um, anemia is a an... secondary condition. Yeah. high blood pressure. Okay, well, let's, you know, you sound like a smart guy, and so let's work, work with me here. Anemia is when you're not making enough blood cells, right? Right. Okay, blood cells carry oxygen, correct? Correct. So if you have anemia and you're not making enough blood cells, you're not delivering oxygen correctly to, the, to your body, to the cells of your body, right? So what, right. Is the heart's, what do you think the heart's response and the circulatory system's response going to be to these low levels of oxygen? The heart's going to pump harder and the pressure's going to increase. So the right. high blood pressure is the body's attempt to force more oxygen or deliver more oxygen to the cells under an, in an anemic state. So far, so good? Yes. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get more oxygen to the cells, or more oxygen to the, the regular cells, and we want to have her making more red blood cells. So it's a couple strategies. First, immediately she's got to start doing some deep breathing. And all the things we talk about, sitting on the couch and slowly deep breathing in through your nose, 15 seconds in, 15 seconds out, in through the nose, out through the nose. Anything she could do to relax her body will help with the breathing response, and that's hot water, hot tubs, hot showers, massages, Reiki, yoga, meditation, all these things uh, to, for relaxing the body and increasing oxygenation. Then we want to start working with improving the production of red blood cells. So don't go away. I'll tell you about that. Uh, when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Side 844-236-6010, talking to Chad in Colorado. Hey, Chad. Hey, Ben. Are you, uh, where in Colorado are you, by the way? I'm in Denver. Oh, nice. Have I met you? Have we met? You know, um, I, we've met once before outside of a, a local restaurant. I wonder, um, hmm, Okay. Sounds vaguely familiar. All right, here's the deal with red blood cells and anemia. Anemia being a red blood cell issue. Uh, breathing is step number one. You've got to relax the body. Under conditions of uh, low levels of oxygen, the blood pressure is going to change, the heart's going to work harder, etc. However, once you've done that, once you've taken care of the deep breathing, then you've got to start working with generic, general ways of taking care of the body. The red, bl red blood cells, the production of red blood cells is controlled by the kidneys. They're made in the bone marrow. There's a, the liver is involved. Uh, the uh, spleen is involved, nutritional deficiencies are involved. There's so many different factors that are involved in, in anemia. You're going to go crazy if you start to work on every system of the body, which is why you want to simplify. And this is so, so important, you guys. It doesn't matter what the specifics of your health challenge are as much as taking care of the body in general. So for uh, conditions of anemia, red blood cell conditions, first and foremost, you're going to deal with digestive issues. Nobody just has anemia, as you pointed out, Chad. It's secondary. It follows generic, generalized breakdown in the body. So if your mom is like a normal 70 or 60-year-old woman, you know, I'm assuming she's in her 60s or 70s at least, right? If she's like a normal right. 60 yeah. or 70, say again? 68. Okay, so she's a normal 60 or 70 year old woman, she's going to have digestive issues. Unless she, she's been studying health and nutrition for her whole life, she, chances are she's doing what the standard American does, which is subsist on the standard American diet. There's no way 
No way, no way a digestive system can be healthy if it subsists on the standard American diet. That means if of the 320 or 330 million Americans, 329.999 million of us are going to have digestive problems. And the 0.1 out of 100 or whatever it is uh, that understands how the body will work is the exception. But the vast majority of us is going, are going to have digestive health issues. Once the digestive system breaks down, we're off to the disease races, and that includes anemia. Just to give you a little example, uh, the red blood cells are very susceptible to oxidation damage, to, to rusting, to destruction of their membrane. Their membrane is made up of fats. So if you're not absorbing essential fatty acids, if you're not getting your essential fatty acids, if you're not absorbing vitamin E, if you're not absorbing nutrients from fruits and vegetables, which tend to be fatty, you're going to have messed up blood cells. So working on the digestive system is extremely, extremely important. That means any food allergens have to be eliminated, food intolerances, etc. making sure she's using her BioLumin nightly essence. There's a very important connection between uh, probiotics, good bacteria that live in the gut, and the ability to absorb and utilize fats. So making sure she's using her bioluminitely essence and eating fermented foods as well as apple cider vinegar to help support digestive health. Digestive enzymes can be helpful. Use the ultimate enzymes after meals with her apple cider vinegar. Uh, and then also if she wants to throw a couple more things in there, she can use lecithin granules, which will help her, help her absorb fats and also maybe even um, some hydrochloric acid drops or betaine HCL, which she'll get a little bit in the ultimate enzyme. So all the digestive strategies we talk about here on the program all the time. Make sure she's on the healthy start pack and I would throw in a little extra vitamin E. Uh, vitamin E is very protective for the outside part of cells, maybe 400 international units a day. And then with her ultimate EFAs, have her taking three capsules in the morning and three capsules at night. Vitamin C is also very protective for the cells. Uh, in addition to the vitamin C that she gets from the healthy start pack, she might want to throw in a little bit of extra vitamin C. Uh, and uh, maybe 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams. And then directly for the hypertension, uh, the B vitamin niacin can be very helpful. Timed release niacin is the best way to go if you're trying to treat hypertension. Maybe 100 milligrams of timed release niacin to 200 milligrams of timed release niacin a day. And then uh, also directly for the blood pressure, uh, coenzyme Q10 is super important, not just for blood pressure, but also for cardiovascular issues, for heart issues. Uh, maybe 100 milligrams or so of coenzyme Q10 in its oil-soluble form. So focus on relaxing the body, focus on digestive health and digestive wellness, make sure she's on an all-around nutritional supplement program, use niacin and coenzyme Q10 and vitamin E specifically for the heart and specifically for the blood cells. And last but not least, if she has any blood sugar issues, those need to be addressed as well. Use the Sweeties, eliminate blood sugar spiking foods, and also for anybody who's dealing with blood sugar issues, drinking water after you eat your bread and your pasta and your rice and your potatoes and your fruit juice and your fruits and your desserts, drinking more water will help dilute your blood sugar, and that can be a helpful strategy too. There's so, so many different things you could do, and you're right on, Chad. It is absolutely a secondary issue. Take care of the body as a whole, and the body will take care of the blood cells on its own. Good? Anything else? Okay. No, no, that's, that's a great start. Thank you so okay, much. Good deal, Chad. Thanks so much, man. Have a beautiful day, buddy. All right, Rose in Virginia, what's going on, sweetheart? Hi there, Ben. Thank you for your kindness, uh, love, and prayers for you. How would I say, uh, I think you got some information on one of my questions, insomnia. I have a dear friend that she's having insomnia yes. issues. I, I mentioned to her about the breathing and to make sure that she's drinking you know, you know, water that is not uh, from the faucet and things like that in in her diet. But I think you spoke to a caller that is trying to yeah. We she want somebody was trying to wean themselves off of a sleeping pill called Ambien. But here's the deal with insomnia, and it's an epidemic. Insomnia is a classic sign of a body in distress. And when you think about it logically, it just makes sense. If your stress response is awakened, if the stress response has been alerted, if cortisol is being secreted and estrogen and all these stress hormones, the body's not going to let you fall asleep because it thinks that you're about to be killed by a lion. It doesn't make sense that you'd fall asleep when you're under stress. 
So you got to relax the body, activate the parasympathetic nervous system. If there are stressors that are getting into the body, and sugar is a major stressor, elevated blood sugar, those need to be addressed. Food allergens, digestive toxicity, that can represent a stressor. So, uh, and of course, emotional and mental issues too, and spiritual issues for that matter. These, these can all represent stressors. So you want to regard insomnia, inability to fall asleep as a classic classic sign of a body in distress. Now, in addition to all the, all the uh, uh, positive stressors, the things that are, we're putting into the system that cause stress, there are negative stressors, things that are not getting into the body that can cause stress. And of course, I'm talking about the mighty 90 essential nutrients. There's lots of, uh, lots of nutrients that are specifically going to help the body relax. And we mentioned a few of them earlier. Magnesium has a relaxing effect. Lithium has a relaxing effect. GABA, G-A-B-A, has a relaxing effect. Tryptophan has a relaxing effect on the body. The amino acid glycine has a relaxing effect on the body. These are all wonderful ways to relax the body. However, Getting on the mighty 90 essential nutrients is just as important or even more important than trying to target, than trying to target uh, uh, the problem with specific nutrients. So using the entire mighty 90, getting her on the healthy star pack in combination with niacin and lithium and GABA and glycine and magnesium and tryptophan, that's the way you want to handle insomnia and, of course, activating the para sympathetic relaxation rest and digest nervous system is also going to be important and then if she has any stressors like sugar which is a major stressor or food allergens or food toxins those need to be eliminated too thank you so much for your call rose i hope that helps and i want to see if we can get one more call in let's go to uh sally in missouri hold on a while what's going on sally Hey, hey, Ben, I just hey. love you to pieces, but I've got a problem. We yeah. have mono in the family, okay. and I'm trying to keep from getting it. Can you okay. give yes. me some good tips? Mononucleosis, is that what you're talking yes. about? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so you got to strengthen that immune system. Anything you could do to... Uh, uh, to build up your immune system is going to be very helpful. First thing to think about is vitamin C. Vitamin C is the most important of all the um, immune vitamins. And, and the B, comp, I don't want to say the most, but it's very, very important, vitamin C. High doses of vitamin C. You know, if you put vitamin C on bacteria itself, you will kill those bacteria. And you can use vitamin C liquid or vitamin C powder put into water. You can make a vitamin C spray with vitamin C in water to uh, kill the bacteria that cause body odor. If you have a stinky armpits and you put vitamin C solution on your armpits, you'll kill the bacteria within a split second. This is just to demonstrate for you how powerful vitamin E is as an anti-infective, antibacterial, and pro-immunity nutrient. By the way, sugar antagonizes vitamin C and it will knock out your immune system. So keeping your intake of refined sugar, refined flour, uh, and bread and pasta, you know, all the foods we talk about here on the program, desserts, fruits, juices, etc., is very, very important for protecting your immune system. Vitamin E is mega important for the immune system. Magnesium is also important for the immune system. Get on the healthy start pack and then you probably want to throw in some digestive support as well because most of your immune system is located in the digestive tract uh, it's all the time we have for today sally there's so much more i could tell you if you want to call back tomorrow we'll get you first up and we'll talk some mono and immune system stimulation immune system boosting i should say all right thanks for listening friends i'm pharmacist ben check out my website truthtreatments.com and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We'll talk to you all later. Have a spectacular, wonderful, beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.